Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Walillahi alhamd. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillahi allazi hadana lihaza wa ma kunna li nahtadi ala ula an hadana Allah. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. Arsala rasooluhu bil huda wa deen al haq. Li yuzhirahu ala deen kulli. Wa law karha al mushrikun. Amma baad. قال الله تعالى في كتاب الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداع إذا دعاني فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون صدق الله العظيم Committed Muslims, Brothers, Sisters, Youth and Children in Islam Alhamdulillah, we have completed another glorious month of Ramadan, although in very difficult and different circumstances. Because of the pandemic, we have not been able to observe our Islamic obligations in the manner that we are used to. But we must thank Allah for the many blessings that he has bestowed upon us that alhamdulillah we are not afflicted by this terrible terrible affliction that millions upon millions of people around the world are afflicted by that we and our families are safe from this terrible affliction now, this ayat from Surah Al-Baqarah that I shared with you, uh, this follows immediately after the ayats uh, regarding uh, the fasting in the month of Ramadan. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has linked uh, fasting in the month of Ramadan with building of taqwa. But this ayat which is addressed to the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says to him, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي أَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيب That when my servants ask you or my servant asks you about me, tell them that I'm very near to them. And this is what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is communicating to us, that he is near to us. And then he says, "Ujibu dawata da'e iza da'ane fal yastajibu li, wal yu'minu bi la Allahum yarshudun." That Allah says that I answer your du'as. When you make supplications to me, Allah says I answer them. So fal yastajibu li. So therefore, ask me. Allah says, ask me. And this is Allah's grace and mercy that Allah is saying when you ask me. I will answer your prayers. And will yu'minu bi la'allahum yarshudun. And you make your commitment to Allah, you become true mu'mins so that you may achieve proper guidance to the proper way, the guidance of Allah, the proper way of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of the ayats relating to fasting in the month of Ramadan is giving us these glad tidings that he is very near to us, that he loves us, that he wants to answer our prayers. Of course, these prayers and these supplications have to be for legitimate uh, means, not for illegitimate gains, uh, not for selfish reasons, but in order to improve our character that we have been striving throughout the month of Ramadan to improve our character, that we abstain not only in the month of Ramadan from food and liquids, but also abstain from other negative uh, tendencies and negative behavior that, me, that we may fall into in other months. And so it's important that as we 
as we have completed this month of Ramadan, and we are today celebrating Eid al-Fitr, uh, regrettably in very, very difficult circumstances, and yet we can take comfort in the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised to us that he will answer our prayers. We need to keep in mind that while we have ended our month of Ramadan, there are millions upon millions of people in the world for whom there is no end to Ramadan because they are poor, they are destitute, they are in difficulties. And it becomes incumbent upon us as committed Muslims to strive to alleviate their suffering, not merely in terms of feeding them, which we must do, but also removing the conditions that have led to their poverty and their suffering. One other point that I think as Muslims we need to keep in mind, and that is our engagement, our continued engagement with the Noble Quran. In the Noble Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Isra, ayat number 82, uh, reminds us, أَوْزُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we made this Quran accessible to you as a cure and as a grace from Allah. That in this Quran there is a cure for us and it is a grace and mercy from Allah. And as far as the zalimin are concerned, the oppressors are concerned, there is nothing but loss for them. Now, I want to draw your attention to these two points of cure and grace and mercy. When we think of the word cure, it, it immediately brings to mind illness or disease. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that this Quran is a cure for you for many uh, mental, physical, and spiritual illnesses. But how are we going to achieve that cure, or how are we going to be cured if we do not follow its instructions properly? A quick comparison would be if somebody were physically ill, and they went to a doctor, and the doctor prescribed certain medication for them, and then he said that you should take this medication three times a day. Now, when we come home, if we take those medications based upon the doctor's instruction three times a day, we look forward to getting cured. But if we do with that medication that the doctor has prescribed, what many of us do with the Noble Quran, that we pick it up, we read it without understanding it, and then we kiss it and put it back on the shelf, then we are not going to be cured from the mental or spiritual illnesses that we may suffer. So while we pay more attention to the doctor's instructions, regrettably, some Muslims do not pay adequate attention to Allah's divine words. So I think it is important that we pay adequate attention to Allah's words and Allah's uh, directions for us to lead through ourselves through this life. And at the same time, understand that Allah's mercy is essential for us to be able to achieve salvation in the hereafter. There is a well-known hadith of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in which he said that no person will enter paradise except with the mercy of Allah. And when his companions asked the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam whether he was included among these people, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied, yes, even I will not enter paradise without the mercy and grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are nothing, not even equal to the dust of the shoes of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How can we hope to enter paradise without the grace and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And he himself has made it clear in this noble Quran, in this ayat from Surah Al-Isra, that the Quran is a cure and a mercy for us. And we need to engage the Noble Qur'an. And indeed, we know that the Qur'an is intimately linked with the month of Ramadan. It was in the month of Ramadan that the Qur'an was first revealed. So we hope and pray, inshallah, that as we proceed in our life, 
that we will continue to engage the noble book of Allah in order to be able to have it serve as a cure for us and as a mercy on the day of judgment. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.